So we're here looking at Matthew 23, and, and, and let, me, let me give you the bottom line straight away before we get delve into the chapter. This is the bottom line. Jesus loves Pharisees. See, we don't. The term has become within our discourse, within our understanding, a dirty word. Nobody wants to be called a Pharisee. If somebody was to say to you, oh, you're very, you're, you're acting like a Pharisee, that would not be a compliment. It would be an insult. But I want you to remember, if you forget everything else, Jesus loves Pharisees. Now, 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 when we come to look at uh, Matthew 23, you might start to think as we go through, how can that be true, Pastor? I mean, look at what Jesus says to them. How can that be true that you're saying to me that Jesus loves a Pharisee? If so if you've got your Bible there, turn with me to that chapter, Matthew 23. I'm in the New King James Version. It starts off by saying, then Jesus spoke to the multitudes and to his disciples. He's speaking to the crowd. The crowd's been there for some time, listening to him speak about and be challenged by some of these self-same scribes and Pharisees trying to trip him up, trying to trap him, trying to catch him doing or saying or 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 or, or verifying or, or whatever it is they want to try and get him to do and catch him and catch him out so jesus now speaks now i want you to note that this is in matthew's gospels for sure the last public discourse that Jesus is going to give. In a few short chapters, we are going to have the, the, the upper room experience followed by the, the Gethsemane experience, followed by the arrest, followed by the mock trial, followed by the crucifixion, and Matthew ends with the resurrection and the commissioning. This is the last public discourse that Jesus will give. There's a mixed crowd, including some of these very self-same Pharisees and scribes. And so verse two, Jesus says to them, the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Therefore, Jesus says, whatever they tell you to do to observe, that observe and do. Jesus had respect for their position. Jesus does not say, don't be a Pharisee. Jesus says, listen, they are sitting in a long line that goes all the way back to Moses. They have legitimacy. But then he follows up and says, the end of verse 3, but do not do according to their works, for they say and do not do. They say and do not do, for they bind heavy burdens hard to bear and lay them on man's shoulders but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers in his commentary on this chapter 
William Barclay, in his daily commentary, identifies that there were six, actually no, seven different type of Pharisees. Let, 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 me, let me go through them uh, with you, because I think that, that they are instructive, as we remember that Jesus loves the Pharisees. Hmm. There was a shoulder Pharisee. He was meticulous in his observance of the law, and the reason you would know is that on his shoulders he would have you know, signs and, uh, and all those the, the demonstrations of I've done this, the worn like medals. So when he walked around looking all proud, you could see, you know, uh, that, that, oh my, look at him. The shoulder Pharisee. Then there was the wait a little Pharisee. He was a Pharisee who could always produce an excuse for putting off what he knew he ought to do. The wait a minute Pharisee. Then there was the bruised or bleeding Pharisee. You find all of these in the Talmud. These Pharisees received their name because they did not value women at all. And even if they saw a woman walking towards them, they would turn their head away so as not to be seen to see those they thought were beneath their notice. Fourth, there was the one that was sometimes called the pestle and mortar Pharisee, or sometimes referred to as the humpbacked Pharisee. They were so humble, their heads would always be down and you'd see the top of their back. So humble were they, they shuffled along the road, not wanting anybody to catch eye with them because they were so, so humble. Then there was the, what's called the ever reckoning or the compounding Pharisee. Huh. This was the Pharisee that had the checklist and was always forever ticking off, ticking off, ticking off, ticking off, tick to make sure that he had filled up his quota for good deeds for the day. And would go through the day with his ready reckoner and, and, and tick, 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 tick. Oh yeah, you will tick, oh, I've done that, yeah, tick, oh, I've tick. And if he hadn't done one, he'd fret all day till he managed to tick. And then he could go home and say, ah, what a day that's been. I'm such a good Pharisee. The sixth one was the timid Pharisee or the fearing Pharisee. Uh, he lived his life in fear always worried about the judgment of God coming upon him, never a smile on his face, to be caught with a smile. Mm -mm. What if God sees me smile? <laughs> Six Pharisees. Oh, but there was a seventh. There was one more, and that was what Barclay calls the God-fearing Pharisee. The one who truly loved God and found delight in obedience to him. Jesus loves the Pharisees. Let me, let me remind you about these Pharisees, because sometimes we're so hard on them, we forget that, that like some of us sometimes, and I'm coming there, <laughs> like some of us sometimes, but we need to remember that, that at their hearts, at their hearts, they, most of them wanted to do the right thing, they, they had respect for the law of God. 
respect that you know in our criticism i wonder i wonder if we sometimes have respect for the word of god oh yes i know i know i know that it's sometimes over the top and and as you read matthew 23 the next future the next few verses of the chapter you'll see in it woe after woe after woe after woe after woe against these self-same scribes and pharisees because of their inconsistency a word that is used very often is the word hypocrites and you know that 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 word essentially at its root greek root is the word actor pretender one who jesus jesus himself has given a definition back there did you notice it in verse three for they say and do not do by the way that's why jesus was able to say to them please 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 if they tell you to do something because they have a regard for the word of god what they're going to tell you is going to be the right thing to do see we get upset sometimes with those people who point out our faults point out that there's a way and our immediate reaction oh look at him they're such a hypocrite well that may well be true who knows but sometimes what they're pointing out we call them hypocrites because we don't want to take on board the truth of what they're pointing out to us and so in order to deflect our own sense of, of feeling uh, guilt we place it all on them and say oh no hypocrites who are they to tell me but jesus said you know the first thing that jesus said to the crowds was you see these pharisees over here the scribes when they tell you to do something do it do what they say just don't do what they do because what they say is coming from a deep respect for the law of God. Yeah, they may go over the top. Yeah, Jesus describes how 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 you know they 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 they, they go they go overboard. Sometimes they focus on on the 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 minor details rather than on the major details. Sometimes they they're their, 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 their focus is on the wrong thing in terms of their practice. But even as he's giving the scribes and Pharisees a real going over in these verses, and there could be no doubt. You know, he calls them blind guides. He, he, he calls them, he calls them uh, you know, greedy. In, in, in verse 14 you devour widows houses and and for a pretense make long prayers when we come later remember that long prayers not good in jesus eyes all right just just saying just saying you know, just, 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 okay let me move on before i get myself into more trouble woe to you he says you are fools, you are blind, you know, uh, and he's, he's, he, he calls them out for all of those things. Uh, verse 25, you clean the inside, uh, the outside of the cup, but you don't deal with the inside. Uh, woe to you, you're like whitewashed tombs, you know, but inside you're dead. But Jesus... I remind you, love the Pharisees. You see, for me, the critical point is this is it comes towards the end of the chapter. Jesus loved uh, the Pharisees. 
How do I know? Well, let's come to verse 27. It says, Jesus laments over Jerusalem. But I think that Jesus was also lamenting over those Pharisees that he'd, he'd spent so much time dealing with and telling off. Hear those words, perhaps in a different perspective, and, and understand the deep, 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 deep love that Jesus had for the Pharisees. Oh, Jerusalem. Jerusalem. The one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you are not willing. See, your house is left to you desolate, for I say to you, you shall see me no more till you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord Jesus. Heart was pained by what he had to say, from what he had to share, even to the Pharisees. He loved them. This is a prime example of what we read in scripture, where, where we are told, whom the love the Lord loves, he chastens. And there can be no question in your mind or in my mind that this for the Pharisees publicly taken down like that. They had tried to take Jesus down, but now the tables have been turned and they find themselves exposed. And yet the purpose behind it, and they understood, was not embarrassment. The divine impetus was not revenge. It was love. It was a father coming to a child and saying, listen, we can do better than that. Stop the pretense. I know you love my word. I know you love my law. I know that. But let's stop the pretense. I, I, I know somewhere deep within you is a regard for the, for the things of God. And sometimes you misspeak and often you misbehave. Stop. Listen. I love you. We can do better. And I wonder. Is Jesus speaking to us today with the same love, the same regard, the same forthrightness? Because he loves us in the same way he loved the Pharisees. Don't give them such a hard time. Often we have this phrase, those who know better are supposed to do better. Looking from our perspective, let's be very careful. Even in the use of the term pharisaical. Even how we call others hypocritical. Let's be careful. But most of all, I want you to remember, Jesus loves a Pharisee. He wants to bring them close. He wants to help them to change. And that's why he points out the problems. He still operates the same way with us today. Because he loves us. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. If today, 
as you reflect on your own experience, your own uh, gap between what you know and what you say and what you do, you recognize your own faults, your own failings. Talk to him. He has promised. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. Is he still the same? He still loves Pharisees and hypocrites today. He loves Pharisees. He loves me. And for that, this Monday morning, the first day of the month of August, I am grateful. How about you? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for loving us loving us that you will not let us go without a battle, loving us so much that you will tell us the sometimes painful truth about ourselves that we might be saved. May we hear your spirit and not harden our hearts. You just want to save us. Thank you for this fresh opportunity at the beginning of this new day to place ourselves totally into your hands. Bless us. Use us to be a blessing to others today is our prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen.